Hi, welcome to Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel. I am Barbara Tuckett, your host and the owner of Sweet Dreams Travel. I am a wellness travel specialist. I believe that our mind, body, and spirit all play into our well being. And I create travel experiences which improve your wellness so that you return from your vacation with more health, more happiness, and more connection, both with those you've traveled with and also with your destination. In these episodes, I explore travel and wellness experiences, giving you ideas and recommendations, and also interviewing people who have firsthand experience of the places where you may want to go next. Welcome, let's get started. Hey, so I am excited today that I get to have two guests. So today I have Becky and Colleen, and it's really fun because they are friends with each other, but they both booked cruises for this summer, both going to Alaska and yet different cruises, different dates and everything. Did you guys even know that each other was booking an Alaska cruise? I did not. I did not either. Okay. So (laughs) it's so fun. And their cruises just departed like three days apart from each other. Like they really seriously were going at almost the same times, but they weren't ever in the same place at the same time. So I just thought it would be super fun to get both Becky and Colleen on and let them talk about their cruises. So welcome, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I am going to share my screen here, if I can get it to share. And this will just kind of help guide us through kind of with what we're what we're going to talk about today. So, um, so we have two different ships. They were both with Royal Caribbean, the Ovation of the Seas and the Quantum of the Seas. And, um, both of you guys, it's so funny because you both took your adult kids and their spouses and everybody with you. So, but no little kids, nobody took like babies or anything like that. You guys just took your adult kids, right? Yes. Um, Yes. And another similarity is you both opted for like the balcony type cabins. Um, Colleen's family, they did the the actual balconies and Becky's family, um, Becky and her husband, you guys did the virtual, I mean, the regular balconies, but then you put your kids in the virtual balconies, right? Yes. And so Becky, tell us just really quickly, what did they like about the virtual balconies or what did, what did you think about that? Well, they liked that they, there was a couple different cameras that they could switch between uh-huh. I think the front camera and there might have been a side camera and a rear camera. So they could kind of check out what was happening outside, just being in their balcony. Also, we were right across the hall, so it was easy for them to come over and just, um, See the real outdoors. Yeah. (laughs) On our balcony. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's fun. Um, and I assume everybody loved their balconies, Colleen, in your family. Yeah. Balconies were, uh, a hit that my kids were out on the balcony a lot. I mean, every time they were in the room, they were basically out on the balcony and we could kind of see each other. If we leaned over, (laughs) <laughs> and looked on both sides we could kind of talk and see each other as well because we were we were five rooms just right in a row yeah and so it, I mean it got it started to get pretty cool and so we it some nights it was a little cool and I love it I love the cool and the cold and so I it was nice it was great yeah. get out of the heat <laughs> yeah that's awesome so um the two ships were Colleen your ship was the ovation of the seas and Becky, yours was the Quantum of the Seas. And those are two sister ships. So they are very, very similar. Your itineraries were super similar also. You both saw Seattle, you both saw Juno, Skagway, and Victoria in British Columbia. Then the only couple things that were different was Colleen on yours, you got to see the little town of Sitka. And mm-hmm. Becky, you stopped at Icy Strait Point. And then both of you got to see the Inside Passage and cruise through there. Um, Colleen's was just called Alaska Inside Passage. And Becky, yours was called the Endicott Arm and Dawes Glacier. But it was essentially the same, you know, cruising through the glaciers. 
Um, they just were called different things. So very, very few differences that way. With your ships, um, the only differences, since I, like I said, these are sister ships. And so really they're super similar. They both have this fun place that's called the North, North Star up at the top. And it's this glass observation capsule. It's this big old arm that comes up above on the top of the ship and you can look around and see everything in all directions. Um, they both have 18 restaurants and bars. They've got this fun place called the Bionic Bar that have like robotic arm bartenders. They both got flow riders. They've got like bumper cars and basketball courts and their theater is called the 270 Theater. They both got roller skating rinks. Like so, so, so identical, so, so similar. Other than the only thing that's different is on the Ovation, um, their lounge is called the Diamond Lounge. The Quantum Lounge is called the Golden Lounge. And then just one different um, eating place. On the Ovation, they've got the fish and ships on the upper deck. And on the Quantum, they've got the noodle shop. So let's talk about the fish and ships and the noodle shop. Did either of you guys eat at either of those places or what did you think? Go ahead, Becky. We did not eat at the noodle shop ever. Okay. There was okay. plenty of food. We never. Yeah. So many yeah, places. We looking. Yeah. So many places. Yeah. And the noodle shop is kind of an oriental um, place. But what about the fish and chips? Did you ever eat? Yeah, there? we tried. We tried the fish and chips. I mean, it was between meals. We were eating. It felt like we were eating like six meals a day because yeah. we kind of wanted to try everything. But we, we got a few orders of fish and chips and passed them around and they were really yummy. That was fun. Okay. It was good. Okay. I've lived in England and had fish and chips there. Mm -hmm. And so they were good. So you, <laughs> yeah, up. you wanted to make sure that they lived up to the yeah. reputation. Okay. Um, and in a minute, we'll go on and we'll, we'll talk a little more about like what you guys actually did on board. But for right now, um, yeah, let's let's talk about things that you really enjoyed about the ship or experiences you had on board, um, any food that you loved or shows or anything like that. Just let's talk about the onboard experiences. So, um, Becky, do you want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Um, what did we love about the ship? We loved all the different activities. There was a lot to do. Like there was never a dull moment. There was never a time that we couldn't go do something. Um, we actually probably, you know, were trying to find some downtime a little bit. <laughs> the day we went to Dawes Glacier, you were there watching. And so that was kind of some downtime, but we just kept busy. We loved the North Star. That was really cool to go up and um, to get that 360 degree view. Um we also, as a family, probably our favorite activity on the ship was the iFly. That was really a lot of fun. We all did that. And and most of us have never, never experienced that. So only one of our the people in our family had. So that was really fun. Yeah, that is super fun. Any favorite restaurant or did you just love like the main dining room or anything like that? Yeah, the main dining room was really, really good. I'm trying to think, like they had at the 270, they had um, a great place you could get salads and sandwiches and soup. Um, I mean, it was cooler. I, I never ate the soup, but we had lots of salad and sandwiches there and everybody really enjoyed it. It was really great. That's good. Okay, Colleen, how about you? What kinds of onboard Okay, stuff? so... Our, our highlight for our family on the ship was the flow rider. My boys did it every single day and you have to, you have to like earn your bracelet. You have to prove that you're good enough that you can stand up and then you earn a bracelet. So all my boys wanted to earn bracelets, my son-in-laws, my sons. So they all did that, but they probably did that consistently every single day. They love that. Um, we really wanted to do iFly. It sold out in the first day oh. like we went to sign up for it um a day into the cruise a day or two into the cruise and it was completely full so we never got to do that it looked really fun yeah um but they 
but and we same with the North Star. Our North Star filled up really fast, and by the time we went to sign up, it was full. So that was a little. That I mean, that was too bad. We weren't too heartbroken or anything. There were plenty of other things to do. Yeah. Um, my kids loved. I think they tried out every swimming pool and every hot tub. Um, There's like eight swimming pools. They love the um, foosball and ping pong. I thought they would try rock climbing. Nobody did rock climbing. I thought that would kind of be like a highlight, but I think Flow Rider took the yeah took the medal. Was the top already right there? So. Yeah, they love the Flow Rider. Um, I really loved. I felt like the cleanliness levels were amazing. Um, I don't know about you, Becky, but every time we would go in for a meal, they they would divert you to a little hand washing station. Um, things were picked up immediately. Like you wouldn't see dishes sitting there long or even in your own room, room service and dishes and everything was just, nothing was left out very long or could go bad or spread anything bad. I felt yeah. like the cleanliness levels were really good and I appreciated that. Um, I, my boys, I think did room service like every night, got chicken <laughs> wings and steak quesadillas. <laughs> they were just pounding down the wings. I'm telling you, um, our favorite dining experience was we loved our main dining room. Um, our service, our two servers were so awesome. I have a, two, a son and a son-in-law who both have celiac. And they were, they would take their orders the night before for the next day. And they made the gluten-free experience really good for them. It was a little harder up on the Windjammer. We would just have breakfast and lunch at the Windjammer. And the gluten-free, they had to, things were not labeled like gluten-free as well. They had to like go find somebody. Once they found somebody, they directed them and helped them a lot and were good. But it would have been nice to have some labeling for gluten-free yeah. um, at the Windjammer. But the dining, the main dining room was great. Um, I would say the, the transfers were great. Getting on and off the ship, that was probably the best experience we've had. It's got, it went a lot faster than previous cruises we've done. Um, my kids, they also loved Sorrento's Pizza. And they did a gluten-free pizza there as well. Sounds like we ate a lot because we did. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, good. Yeah, that was good. I liked that the comedian on board was really funny and we went to both of his shows. I felt like the other shows were kind of blah, were kind of okay, but no, nothing great. Okay. But, um, but the comedian was good. Okay. So. And how about your shows, Becky? Did you experience any of the shows? Yeah, and I agree with Colleen. Like the main show that they really advertised, I was like a little disappointed in it. It was I think they're kind of struggling to get people like performers back on the ships and yeah. stuff. I don't know. That was a little weak, but they had on our ship this Elton Elton John impersonator and he was great. And we went to he did two shows and he did bingo. And he was great. He was so much fun. Bingo something that we've never really done before. But um, one of our son-in-laws had and with his family and talked about how fun it was. So we did that a couple of times on the ship. And that was a lot of fun as a family. Um, but yeah, I, I would say he was like the best. And then also I would agree with Colleen that everything was like super clean. Nothing ever left. Um, very long. And they did divert you to wash your hands. I mean, they weren't like, you have to go wash your hands. It was just everybody diverted. And I think everybody's used to it. So it yeah. was great. I felt like the cleanliness was was really good. That's good. That's good. Um, all right. So let's talk about excursions. Um, you don't have to go through every single port or every single place. But um, let's just talk about maybe some of the highlights uh, or things that you did that you loved, whether you did it through Royal Caribbean or whether you just kind of got off the ship and did it on your own or whatever, like just kind of, kind of in terms of like recommendations, if somebody's going to cruise to Seattle, what would you recommend that they do or from Seattle up to Alaska, what you would recommend for them? So let's start with maybe Colleen this time. 
Okay, sure. Um, so we did three excursions and we did all of them through the ship. Okay. Um, but in Juneau, it was our first excursion. We were supposed to go kayaking and it was, it was a little bit rainy that day. And right when we got off, they, we were meeting as a group to go and they canceled the excursion. Oh. So we were like, oh my gosh, what do we do? And so we were kind of scrambling and checking out people at the port and seeing what they had available. And so we, we ended up having the boys went, um, went fishing just beach fishing and the girls went whale watching and on a hike to, I believe it was called um, Men the Mendenhall Glacier and it was a beautiful waterfall. And so, and uh, so we kind of split up for the day, but it, they were all awesome. The boys loved fishing. Uh, they wished they could have done like a deep sea fishing. They, they would have gone for that, but it was too late in the afternoon and everything was booked or taken and we were kind of scrambling to find uh something to do so and then yeah the hike was the the hike was beautiful and the falls were gorgeous the whale watching was really fun we just picked a little vendor there off of the boat uh saw a ton we saw nine whales i think and like five sea lions and so we ended up having a great time our favorite excursion was in skagway where we went zip planing and I thought it was going to be more kind of Becky, like we did in Mexico with, I thought it would be more like Explore, you know, where it was yeah. a little more commercial, but it was actually really, um, it was quite raw and authentic and there weren't a ton of groups around and it was, it just felt like our, our group and we were just deep in the forests of Alaska doing this zip lining adventure. And that was awesome. Fun. Okay, how about you, Becky? What were your excursion highlights? So, um, actually, Icy Strait Point was probably the uh, real big excursion highlight for us because in Huna, which is Icy Strait Points, they have the largest zip line. And so that was really cool. You take two different trams, you take a tram up to the top of the mountain, you think you're on the top of the mountain, but then you get on another tram. And you go up even higher and then um you go down this and i was a little scared when i got up there i was like oh my gosh but it is over like in 60 seconds <laughs> and it was really cool you it was the coolest views that we got of the whole um it was really cool we just saw so much um so you wish you could like slow yourself down and go a little slower, but it goes really fast and everybody just really loved that. Even my daughter who doesn't um, love heights, she was kind of really getting nervous on the way up, but she really did have fun and she did great. So that was super fun. And then we went whale watching. There was a little mix up with like, we were supposed to go on a smaller boat Um to go whale watching and um there was some sort of mix up so they sent us on the zip line and then they had us go with the bigger boat um on the whale watching portion and then they refunded us the whale watching portion oh. they were royal caribbean was very very good um about like hey you didn't get what you said and you know like what we said and and so we're gonna just refund that so they refunded that for all of us, but we did still get to go whale watching, but it was like on a bigger boat. So we're supposed to go on a boat, like with 40 or less people. And this boat had like probably 125. Um, and so we saw a lot of tails, you know, just, we did see some whales, but mostly the tails. And then just right at the end, um, the captain was really fun. He kind of said, Hey, I'll buy anybody a drink if they can do a whale call. And then we see something. So my daughter actually was one who did the whale call and that was kind of funny. And then we did see like a mother humpback whale and her baby breach. So that was kind of cool. That was at the end. So that was definitely a highlight. Um, we also, when we went, um, I want to say it was Juno that we went to the Mendenhall Glacier. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there we just, and we didn't um, book that through the ship because we had 
excursions like each day and we were so busy with excursions we never got time to shop and I have girls and they like to shop so that day we said well we're not gonna book any excursions we're just gonna um you know do something local and we ended up taking a bus um and then going up to Mendenhall Glacier and then hiking to Kettle Falls same as you Colleen <laughs> and we all was it our- Nugget was it Nugget Falls I well, thought it was maybe it was I thought it had a kettle in it. Kettle. Okay. Okay. I can't remember for sure. I'll yeah. have to look it up and tell you. Um, yeah. But anyway, so that was really fun to see that. And that was a little more low key day so we could do it. Um, some of my other kids at Skag. Okay. So, and when we did that in Juno, actually J- Jess and Steven, my daughter and her husband, um, they actually did a helicopter excursion up onto Mendenhall Falls and or Mendenhall Glacier and they like have the ice shoes and everything and they had a wonderful time they love that they really talked about that a lot so that was super fun for them um and they also did at Skagway they did a they rented scooters and um and they went and they saw bears and all kinds of fun things so they really liked that that is fun Super fun. Oh, yeah. Great. So fun to hear about all of these excursions. Alaska is amazing. Um, yes. So, Becky, speaking- did you do Bouchard Gardens at Victoria? We did not. And maybe we okay. should have. We did not book one there. Did you do that, Colleen? Yeah, we ended up doing that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's was beautiful. That fun? Would you recommend yeah, it? Yeah, it's yeah, I would highly recommend it. If you haven't been, I've been there several times. None of my kids had been there and it's just, and it changes every time I go and it, it's not super long, but it's, you get a really good kind of overview on the drive out. It's like 40 minute drive out and they, you get kind of a tour of Canada and hear about some things. And then the gardens are just stunning and amazing. And I didn't know the story behind it with um, how, it was the wife who was trying to make up for the damage her husband was doing in mining the limestone and things. So it was interesting. It was good. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Boucher gardens is a fun, fun place to go if you've never gone. So, okay. So Becky mentioned that um, some of her kids saw some bears. Um, You guys want to talk about any like the glaciers or the wildlife or anything like that? that I want to hear about the bears, Becky. Well, um, yeah, Jess and Steven, I don't even know for sure they where they were, but they and Bailey and Austin also saw bears. They did Bailey and Austin did horseback riding and Jess and Steven had chosen that day to do little scooters and they both ran into bears. They were just there. Um as they like went on their little scooter rides. I really don't know too much more about that, other than they thought that was pretty cool. The bears didn't get any too close to them but that was fine they saw them from a distance and they were happy we saw a lot of eagles like we one of the excursions we went on at a skagway we went to haynes and then we went on the chilcat river and we were supposed to see more wildlife but we saw a lot of eagles we probably saw i don't know 20 eagles we saw a big eagle nest and a mama eagle and like three baby eagles and so that was really kind of cool. And the eagles were just stunning. They were beautiful. So that was really a lot of fun. The glaciers on the ship, when we were headed up to the glaciers, they weren't able to go very far because there were a lot of floating chunks of ice. And I guess another cruise ship a few weeks before us hit a chunk of ice with their propeller and had to end up being towed. So they decided when we we didn't get up all that far, um, they decided to turn around and go back. So we didn't get up super, super close to the glacier. Um, so that was a little disappointing, but we were on a big ship. And so I guess I knew that probably could happen because you're on such a big ship. I'm sure the, the smaller ships had a little easier time getting up close. Yeah. How about you, Colleen, with wildlife or glaciers? So like Becky, we saw, you know, so many beautiful, massive bald eagles everywhere. They were like on every pole on 
when we go in for into the city for the excursions, they were just everywhere. So those were beautiful. And we saw a lot of humpback whales on our whale watching adventure. Um, we saw tails, but we saw them breach and that was awesome. We got, a, I think we saw nine of them. Um, we even were able to identify one because when the tail came up, they had a book. They know all the ones that are in that area in Juneau and they had a book. And so we identified a whale called bullet hole. And it looks like it has this white spot on the tail that looks like a bullet hole went through it or something. So that was kind of cool to find that. Um, and we saw sea lions and I asked the questions, how do the sea lions jump up on this huge like buoy? And right when I asked that question, the sea lion just like used its abs and jumped up on it. And I'm like, okay. She's like, okay, there's the answer to your question. <laughs> how they get up there, just like jumped up. That was kind of cool. Um, and we, we saw bears as well, but we had to go to Fortress of the Bears in Sitka to see them. So um, we didn't do an excursion at Sitka, but we took a bus. Some of us took a bus and went to Fortress of the Bears. And that was incredible. I have spent a lot of my life in Montana and I've been to the Bear and Wolf Discovery Museum there. Um, but this was a lot bigger and there were a lot more bears and the bears were a lot bigger. These were huge black bears and massive, massive grizzly bears that they rescue from like something would happen to them as when they were babies or children, their mom was killed or run over or something like that. And so they rescue these bears and they, they put them in this natural habitat. So that was really cool to see all those. Um, as far as glaciers, we just saw the Mendenhall Glacier. Um, we saw, my girls and I saw it from pretty close because we hiked up to Nugget Falls. So we were very close to it. But as far as just on the ship and things, we didn't see, we kind of saw every out, everything else from a distance. But it's really beautiful scenery. So. Yeah, yeah. I agree. The Alaskan scenery is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. So, okay. So to wrap up, is there anything else, anything that was like a favorite or a highlight that we haven't talked about yet or, or non-favorite? Would you do something differently next time? Um, or any like things you would recommend for people to definitely do or not do going on an Alaska cruise? Let's kind of hear your kind of final thoughts. Colleen, do you want to go first? Sure. Yes. Um, so something that I really wish we had done, we did, we did excursions on three of the four ports and I wish we had done them on all of the ports because I don't know, you're there and you may as well just take advantage of what you see. You, there's not much to do if you just kind of walk around. The towns are pretty small and minimal which is fun. It's kind of fun to have a little time to shop and try their fudge and walk around. But um, we wish we would have done deep sea fishing. I think that would have been a highlight, especially somewhere like Sitka, where Sitka yeah. is so tiny and small. That would have been, I think, the perfect place to do that. But that's okay because there's the future and future cruises and places. So, yeah. um, and then again, the favorite probably on the ship was the flow rider. Um, just gathering was with my family was so much fun. Um, I think I, I slightly regret not booking a suite for Matt and I, because um, even though I felt like the rooms were quite spacious for, for little cruise rooms and the design was really well done with storage and the bathroom, there was enough room. We had 11 of us. And so we just kind of assumed that we could just find places on the ship that were open to be able to play games and things like that. And we did a few nights, but we had to kind of search hard and long for them. And it would have been nice to have had a gathering place just like for nighttime or on, on Sunday, we had a church meeting in our room. Um, yeah. Just for all of us to be able to fit there kind of comfortably and play games or um, be together that way. We, we could always find places that just took a while. It just right. took a while and it's a big ship because it's a, there's so many fun things going on that people are out and about. And so 
it's kind of hard to, it was harder than we thought to find places to play games at night, card games and things like that. So, but we love it. And, and that we were grateful that they have some internet, but the internet package, we just did not get great internet. It was pretty spotty the whole time and pretty expensive. So okay. good to know. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? But, Becky? Um, so yeah, I would, I would kind of like the, the internet was a little spotty. I mean, I think you're way out there. And so that was a little spotty. We did have one internet package. Their app was really cool because it did have a chat, but everybody, you had to pay for that. So we just had each cabin kind of have a chat so we could kind of communicate, um, about where we were going or what we were doing. Cause some people, got up earlier and got breakfast earlier and others slept in and it just kind of was all over so so that was nice um I would say we had seven of us and so it worked with our balcony cabin to gather everybody inside because there were some nights that it was kind of cooler and um so that it worked but if you had any more than that yeah you definitely would need a larger gathering place um but that was it was really fun I think think you know the highlights were like um doing the north star that was really cool doing the i fly and just dinner every night gathering together for dinner i actually had a birthday on the cruise so that was fun to have all my kids and their spouses there and we could um they sang me happy birthday and they just have such great service in the in the main dining area um, we had great people taking care of us and our cabin guy was really good. Um, sometimes we were coming and going at such different times and he was always so accommodating. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess if we were to do it differently next time, we would probably go maybe on a smaller ship if we want to go closer to the glacier. That was the only thing that I could, could think of, but we loved the, we loved it. Um, because it was a great thing for all of our family and everybody enjoyed it and we didn't all have to be together all the time um, which was kind of good every people could go off and kind of do what they wanted which was kind of fun but then it was fun to gather back every night and just talk um, talk about what we did and what we saw and share pictures um, we did some fun things not really associated with Royal when we were in Seattle um, my kids hadn't really been there before, so we did Pike's Place Market for a couple hours when we went up there. We went, um, when we came back, we did the Space Needle. That was really easy. There's places that you can store your luggage. And so we just like took an Uber to the place and store our luggage for the day. And then we were able to go to the Space Needle and kind of go around Seattle and do some other things. One of the things some of us went to the locks and the salmon ladder, which was really kind of cool. I'd never seen that. So that was really kind of cool. Yeah, that is fun. Fun, a fun way to just kind of personalize your own trip and make it what you want. So, oh, I'm so glad you guys were able to both talk to me today. This has been so fun. And if anybody has not been on an Alaska cruise, if you can't tell, Alaska is amazing. I think both of you ladies will probably agree with me that Alaska, Alaska cruising is like awesome. It's yeah, it was absolutely gorgeous. It was so much fun. It was so, the service was incredible. The cleanliness levels were incredible. The food was really good. And uh, there were so many fun activities on the ship and the, the places we went to were awesome. So it was, it was a straight A. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And it was a nice reprieve from the heat too. It was kind of nice to go somewhere a little cool. Yes. Yeah. I, lo I love that. Yeah. It is so great. And did you get much bad weather while you were there or was it maybe a little bit of drizzle here and there, a little bit of coolness, but, but overall, okay. What, if, what was your weather like? Our weather yes, was that, really good. Which was good. Yeah. We had rain on that first day at um, Juno, which was enough, I guess, to cancel the kayaking. But other than that, it was, um, it was nice. I, Victoria was like, it was even super warm. It was beautiful. So we didn't have any rain. We just had the coolness a little bit, which 
I kind of felt bad for the lifeguards that had to be out by the pool um because I thought oh it's kind of cold I don't know that I would want to be out here in my swimming suit standing in water but they were very vigilant and um anyway so yeah we had great weather we had a little bit of the first night or and the first day the the seas were a little rocky and bumpy but we just brought stuff we brought patches and medicine and wristbands and so everybody did great good Colleen did anybody get seasick on your cruise um we had a couple nights at dinner where we really felt the ship moving like you could but nothing no one was throwing up or it, it didn't really it just kind of we just kind of all acknowledged it <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but it didn't throw anyone like you didn't have to go to bed or lie down or anything like that. So it was, yeah, okay. you you could tell on the nights when you were really either booking through something or um, you'd feel a little bit of it. So yeah, yeah, when you were further out to sea or whatever. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that is awesome. Again, thank you ladies so, so much for joining me today. It's been so great to talk about your cruises and you know, if, if we were voting the ovation versus the quantum, I think it's a tie. Like, I think both of them are just awesome and amazing. How many, how many people does passengers does the quantum hold? Um, it's both about the same. Um, about 4,900. Yeah. Yeah. Did you both feel like your ships were pretty full? Yeah. Our, our ship was really full. I asked, I said, how full is it? And they said, we've got pretty a pretty full ship this time maybe one or two cabins not full but yeah, yeah. and yeah. yours too Colleen was it pretty full yeah I mean I wouldn't say it was like it didn't feel overly crowded or anything but I think there were a lot of us and it was but it was a big ship it could accommodate us so yeah yeah, yeah. there's lots of lots of spaces and places on the ship but you know that's also why sometimes things excursions or different things fill up so quickly is because there's so many people that are trying yeah. to get all of it so anyway. right yeah well thank, thank you for all your help barb you've been awesome and we oh. really appreciate you holding our hand through this so <laughs> you are welcome you are welcome i'm happy to do it and i love um you know helping you put this together so it's great so thanks again, you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like, share, subscribe, or leave a review. If you'd like to contact me about a vacation, the best way is to visit my website, sweetdreamstravel.net. To connect on social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or LinkedIn. See you next time.